Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight for our um, Facebook Live question and answer session on our sports and fitness courses. My name is Jackie Taylor, and I'm the host for tonight's um, question and answer. Um, I'm going to first introduce you to our panel, um, or ask the panel to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about the course areas um, that they cover. So I will start with Kelly. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly McLaren, Deputy Head of Curriculum um, for Sport and Essential Skills. Um, I also lecture in all of the sports court courses um, from our Level 6 programme up to our um, Year 4 degree programme in Sport and Fitness. Um, my background is in Sports Science, but I also have a background in Coaching um, too. So I will now pass you on to Yvonne. Hi there, I'm Yvonne Alexander. I'm a sports lecturer at the college. I teach on more or less the same as Kelly from level six all the way up to degree, including the, the SFL as well. So we service out the sports department to other departments as well as future focus. Uh, and I'll pass you on to Katrina. Good evening, everybody. My name is Katrina James, and I'm one of the sports lecturers here at the college um, as well. So I um, uh, have a fitness background in um, gym instruction, and I deliver on pretty much all of the courses at the college too, including the PDA in personal training, which we might speak a bit more later. Um, so yeah, looking forward to our Q&A tonight. Thanks, panel. Um, I'm just going to talk very, very briefly, mention a wee, wee bit about the college. So, can you hear me? We can now, Jackie. Yeah. Sorry, I think I, I think I just muted myself. Apologies. Um, so, yeah, so we're local college and university, so you can study with us from entry level, meaning you don't have to have any qualifications and stay with us right up to honours degree um, if you so wish. So that allows you to come to us at any stage in your academic, professional or personal journey and leave at any stage with a qualification and then come back if you uh, decide that you want to do more study. Um, we offer flexible learning, means you can study full time, part time or online from the comfort of your home and fit your learning around your work um, and life commitments. We've got we have expertise in a range of subjects and you'll hear from the panel tonight about their expertise within the sports and fitness area. So if you want to find your future, we'll support you to achieve your goals, wherever, where, whether you're leaving school, returning to education or looking for a complete career change. We still have places left in a number of our courses starting in September this year. Um, so don't don't hesitate to um, look at our website and apply for any courses that you think you might like to do. Um, UHI Murray, we have just gone through a rebranding, so we are now known as UHI Murray, is a place where learning means more, more opportunities, more flexibility, more support and more possibilities. Okay, so we're now going to start um, answering your questions live. All you have to do is post them in the comments um, and I will pass them to our panel. We also have a number of questions that were submitted prior to tonight's event, which we'll also try and cover during the Q&A session tonight. OK, so um, do we have any questions coming through at the moment? No, no, we don't have anything yet. So we'll start off with some of the, the, the questions that were posted prior to tonight's um, event. So we've got a mixture of some people looking to looking for generic information for starting in September um, and others specifically for the sports and fitness. So I think the first question is, can I apply? Can I still apply to start in September? So as I mentioned, yes, our admission staff are still processing our applications. We would encourage you to visit our website and apply online as soon as possible so you don't miss out on a chance of a place in your preferred course. 
Um, I don't know if I have the right entry requirements. Is there someone I can talk to? Absolutely, yes. You can email or call our student services team, and you will, and they will be able to help you. Find you'll find all their details on our website, um, and um, the team there will be able to. Um, they'll meet with you um, either by phone or face to face and discuss all your thoughts and what it is you're looking to do and give you some good advice and help. Um, also, <clears throat> if you wanted to come in to meet any of our lecturers, um, there's a way that we can also arrange appointments for you to meet our lecturers as well, if that's of you any use. Um, Kelly, there's got one here for you. What if I don't get the results I need for a course in sport and fitness? I think the main message here is um, not to worry definitely don't worry about it um, and to get in touch with them um, with the college or ourselves um, and we can give you some specific guidance on what courses that we could possibly offer as an alternative um, alternative to that you can also come along to our um, open evening on the Tuesday the 14th of June and come and speak to us directly um, where a lecturer or a member of the guidance and support staff will be there to help you um, with those queries. But I think the main thing is just to get in touch with us at any time. You, we are contactable right through the summer. So just to ensure that you're aware of that. Okay, thanks, Kelly. Yeah, and I mean, the open evenings are there really for you to meet with the staff and find out as much as you can about the courses. The open evening on the 14th of June starts at half past three and it finishes at half past six. Um, we do ask people, we are asking people to book a slot really just to manage numbers, but we, we are still taking drop-ins for that open evening as well. So if you fancy coming along and meeting the staff and, and finding out more about the college um, and a tour of the college, if, if you want, then, then do come along on the 14th of June. Okay, thank you. Um, right, I have got a couple of questions that are quite related more to the sport and fitness area. Um, so the first one is for, um, Kat, how will I how will I study my sports course? Is there a mix of theory and practical lessons? Hi there. Um, yes, there is. Um, so we have a number of different facilities that we use within the um, UHI Murray campus. So we have our games hall and our fitness suite. Um, primarily that we use, and we do a range of practical subjects and theory subjects and some that have both. Um, so yes, there's there is a good mix um, in there um, with all kinds of with all courses to be honest. And um, we do um, have a varied range of assessment instruments that we use. So some of them might be observations where we assess you practically for your competence and some of them are more like theory um, essay writing or uh, closed book type assessments. So yeah, big big range of um, assessments used and lots of delivery, um, both practical and theory. Okay, thanks Kat. Can I just ask, um, at the moment, the, the sports students, are they in um, all the time? Is it still a sort of a blended approach or is some of them, are some of the uh, lectures, lectures being delivered online still? Um, mostly we are in. Um, there, I think there's a, a few exceptions, but yeah, mostly we are on campus and and in. Okay, okay, okay. that's great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've got next one here. Um, it's for Kelly. Can I do a sports degree at college? Uh, that's an easy one, Jackie. Yes, you absolutely can do a sports degree at college. Um, you can do a couple of sports degrees, actually, the BSc uh, Sport and Fitness and also the BA in Sports Management. Um, so the way that you would um, get entry into those degrees is to come along and do one of our HNC programmes initially. So you would apply to do either our HNC Fitness, Health and Exercise or our HNC Sports Coaching and Development. And after you had achieved that year, you would then progress on to either of the degrees that, that, you, that you choose. So um, you could move on to do our sports management or you could move on to the second year of the BSc Sport and Fitness. And then from then on, you can stay with us throughout to fourth year. Or the unique thing about UHI Moray is that you can exit at any point in your study. And that actually gives quite a unique flexibility to our, you know, our courses. So after year two, you could leave with a diploma in Sport and Fitness, diploma in Sport Management, 
the end of year three, you could exit with your degree, or at the end of year four, you could stay on and do your honours. And I think that's a really important point to get across is that it, we are flexible, we will work with you, and you don't have to sign up for the full four years like you normally have to do at university. We have these exit points that are, are quite appealing to some people. So, yes, yeah. we do have degrees. That answers okay. that question, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Yes, I mean, as I said at the start, we are a, a, a university and a college, so we offer the whole range at every level. And yeah, and Kelly has just really also re-emphasised the fact that we are very flexible in the fact that people can, um, you can come in, you can leave, you come back again, um, and that does make a huge difference to a lot of people who maybe um, other things get in the way of their learning or they decide they want to maybe um, do a, a year and then get, find a job and then come back and do something else. So it's really good for us to be able to do that. I think, you know, to serve our community in Murray um, and beyond as well. So, so thanks for that, Kelly. Um, we have a question just come in. I, I, I'm not sure who to give it to. So, Kelly, if you can pick this one up, what kind of sports activities do you do as part of the practical say uh, practical lessons? Yeah, we do a range of sports activities. Um, we believe that you know the more the more experience of different sports that we can give you, the better. Um, so just to rally a few off the top of my head, we've got football, basketball, uh, boccia, um, badminton. We do lacrosse. Um, we'll go outdoors and do athletics, rugby, touch rugby. Um, yeah, we, we pretty much do everything that, that you can think of. Um, and we also do a lot of fitness fitness sessions as well. Um, so, so yeah, just we try to cover there. as much as we can. Yeah, when you go, Vonnie. Sorry, Kelly, just add in there. Just for example, the day Stephen had uh, the schools group in and he went outdoors with them and did football, rounders and frisbee. And I also had a group in the hall and did frisbee with them today. And as Kelly said, volleyball, quick cricket, we kind of encourage most sports because not everyone's going to be good at every sport and it's it's important that we give everyone a chance to do their best in sports that they enjoy and, and they prefer. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I just, I've got a question um, as well really around when you're doing the practical lessons and part of the, can you talk a bit about the, because um, a lot of the students in the sports get the opportunity to work with in the community and supporting um sort of organizations um and i'm aware that you go out into um and you've done stuff before with the um arthritis care um etc so can you make, talk a wee bit more about that and the, what you're involved with and also um any employer involvement that you've got Sorry, that I just I just threw that question in there because I think it's probably important for people listening to get in that flavour of you know that the fact that they can work within their community. Well, I take this one, Kelly, because it's yeah, go for it's it. Quite similar, so yeah, at, at every level from our, our level five all the way up to degree level, we encourage the students to get real life experience in industry, uh, and it's essential. We've got excellent partnership working with active schools, many gyms in the area for the fitness, health and exercise level six, etc. cetera. Uh, so lots of good kind of Murray Sports Centre, Murray Leisure Centre, etc. So we've got lots of good uh, partnerships going out there. And every level, we encourage them to go out and do work experience. So level five's got a work experience unit in it. So they go out, Elgin City is another one we work with. Uh, level six do a volunteering, so they have to volunteer for 20 hours over the year. So again, a lot of them go with active schools and get the real you know, experience of uh, uh, dealing with children and getting them active. At our HNC level and degree level, there's many, uh, usually a work placement in the course at some point. And again, that's going out and delivering sessions for depending on what level you're at. It could be beginners, it could be advanced athletes. So it, we cater for all levels uh, of, of the, the society. So we cater, we do inclusion, we've got an uh, inclusion unit. So we do disability coaching as well. So we kind of cover everything, Jackie, from the level five all the way up. The students get an opportunity to do a placement in every course we've got. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that just really enhances the learning experience as well, doesn't it? Because, you know, you, they're getting the chance to really get out there and actually work with people out with the with, out with their own, I suppose, their, their peers within the, the college course and actually get out there and, and work with, with people in the community. So I think that's one of the real strengths of a lot of the sports courses that we have here at UHI Murray. So. I think Absolutely. that's right, Jackie. Just to to say as well, we've had a lot of, of students just um, gained employment from those placements and and things as well. So I think that's another bonus. But I think it's not only do we deliver or try to work with industry within the units that it's matched with, but for every unit that we do, we try and get the students uh, uh, matched with industry experience, whether that's taking in guest speakers or us going out to do visits, we, we always try and include that in our delivery model uh, within the sports department. Okay, great. Thank you. That's super. Um, okay, so um, Kat, you mentioned the PDA in personal training a wee oh, couple of minutes ago. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Because that's a slightly different thing um, to the full time courses, but I think it's a really interesting. So if you can make what a PDA actually is and then what's involved in, in, in the, the programme. Yes, um, so the PDA in personal training is a personal development award. Um, essentially what it is, it's a cluster of HMD level units. So the idea is that the, the students come in at our HNC level and study fitness, health and exercise for one year. And that gives them their level two in gym instruction and fitness instruction, then they can progress from that. Um, on to our PDA and personal training. And that's a part-time course that we run. Um, so many of our students choose to do that either alongside perhaps year two of their degree or year three of their degree we've had as well, um, or alongside employment. Um, and then what that does is that is mapped um, to what we call the national occupational standards. And that gives them their level three in personal training. So the HNC is like the stepping stone onto the, the PDA and then the two together gives them their level three in personal training. And it's a really affordable way to do it as well um, because it's a, um, a part time course and because they've done a lot of it through their HNC that gives them, you know, they, they usually get funding for that. And then it's 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 a fraction of the cost of some of the industry. Um, prices as well, which is, I think is a really important point to make um, for that too. So yeah, it's five units um, that we study and two of them are practical based and three of them are theory. Um, and it's it's done over two semesters. So um, yeah, September till May. But there are opportunities if, if the student is wanting to sort of fast track it, they can um, go through it a bit quicker if they want to. Um, if they want to qualify a bit quicker, but for most people, it kind of suits to do it in that way part time because they usually are doing it alongside something else. But if anybody has any questions on it, you know, they can certainly come back to us and we can we can chat to them about that. But um, hopefully, yeah, it's um, really HNC fitness, health and exercise um, students or any ex students out there that are thinking about it, you know, um, can certainly come in. Come and ask us more about it. Okay. Um. Sorry if I'm sorry. Be, sorry, Kelly, on you go. Can I just jump in there, Jackie, as well. It's just to say that the the PDA is usually run in an evening as well, so it's accessible for those that are in employment also, um, to attend. And um, we would also have flexible options of perhaps them doing some of the units online if we could. So we are quite you know workable for those that are in full time employment. That's great. That's actually what I was going to ask Kelly was um, that because if it's in an evening, then it's ideal if you are working um, during the day full time. And um, I did have a question about the PD as well. So when the units were developed and it was put together, did you have involvement from the industry to help shape the PD? Yes. Yeah, so um, it, it, like I say, it's mapped um, to the the it's an or their SQA units but it is mapped to the national occupational standards for the level three personal trainer role. Um, so it enables somebody to qualify with that industry standard. 
Right, okay. Yeah. So I wasn't 100% sure if it, national occupational standards, I was about mm, not 100% sure, but that's actually the industry standard that, that yes. is recognised by the industry in order for people to, to be, yes. you know, to make them qualified to deliver personal yeah. training. Yeah. That's that's right. Yeah. And another important point to make is they would be able to register with SimSpa, which is your kind of regulatory body for the industry okay. as well. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That's good. That PD sounds really exciting, actually. Um, so if anybody's interested, as as Kat said, just get in touch or have a look on our website. The information's all there. Um, get your application in. Um, OK, so I have another question here that's come in. Um, are there any trips or placements as part of the sports courses? So I think this was one for you, Yvonne. Yes, Jackie, I've already kind of spoken about the, the placements a wee bit in the previous question. So yes, there is placements at, at every level of the courses we deliver. Uh, in terms of the trips, we try as much as possible to encourage every group to take them trips to various gyms or sports centres or, or clubs, etc. Uh, to get them known out in the in the the world of, of real work. Uh, and we also do level five and level six. They do a residential each year, so they spend the year uh, fundraising towards the trip, and then towards the end of the year we we go away a trip. So we've been to Prague, we've been to south of France, we've been at Dulgais down near Perth, and it's just a, a great chance that they they get a week away for all their hard work with their fundraising over the year, and we've been kayaking, team building, laser tag mountain biking so loads and loads of different events we do when we get there and it is it's great to see the the students coming together to raise the funds to enable them to do this at the end of the year so yeah that's the that's the trips we do sounds great sounds exciting i think i'll apply myself and <laughs> do, i would love to do something like that and it's a great way as well of for building confidence and you know around the students and, and working as t in a team and just developing all that other skills that are not I suppose maybe not that obvious when you apply to go to college, but working like that does give them that additional skills. And that's the skills that all employers are looking for all the time as well. So, you know, it's an added bonus that they get this opportunity. And fundraising, fundraising isn't that easy. So it's great when you see how they can manage to raise the, the money through their sheer determination, I guess, for, you know, to, 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 to do it and to get the funding to go away. So no, it's good. OK. Um, Kelly, I've got one for you here. I'm leaving school this year in fourth year and want to start a career in sport and fitness. Which course would be best for me? Okay, so initially it depends on the the qualifications that the individual has. Um, obviously, we would make a decision based on those, first of all. Um, and then the individual would be invited along to a pre-start where they would get to meet all their fellow peers that were joining the course. And they would also get to meet some of the lecture and staff on that day as well. So that would give the individual an opportunity to discuss the options that were were available to them. Um, there's there's lots of different kind of pathways that you can go into, um, and we would ensure that the pathway that you choose is the right pathway for you and for the career path that you want to that you want to take. Okay, thank you. That's great, Kelly. Um, okay, um, let's have a look and see what we've got here as well. We've got another one coming. Um, Vonnie, I think it's back to you again. Sorry. <laughs> what sport course should I do if I want to become a sports school teacher? Will part of the course allow me to volunteer at primary schools? Yes, uh, again, as in terms of the, the primary schools, that's what we encourage at every level. Uh, often HNC level, it's beginner coaches that are coming in. So obviously they have to, to have beginners at the sports they're delivering. So we encourage to go into primary schools and that's where our, our partnership with after schools is excellent. And right. we often go out to, to primary schools, we go in and deliver sessions in. Uh, a sports course you should do to become a sports, I would go for the HNC coaching. Uh, because it does give you that extra experience of dealing with groups of kids like you would as a PE teacher at school. So the HNC sports coaching is absolutely the one that they, the road they should go down if they want to be a PE teacher. 
Right, okay, okay. That's fine, thank you. Um, I did have a question for you, Vonnie. It's going out my head now. Um, oh, active schools, yes. For MD that doesn't know, what's active schools? I yes, think most people do, but just in case. Yeah, that's fine. Active Sorry. schools are an organisation uh, funded by Sports Scotland, so our national governing body. And they go into schools and their, their motto is more children, more active, more often. So it's just getting children active. So okay. they work in partnership where active schools, uh, the schools are certain coordinators at different schools. So they go to the schools and they set up sessions within the schools or out with the schools, but school age, uh, mostly primary, but also into secondary as well, the, the kind of younger ones in secondary. And they set up sessions which our coaches or our students go in and they'll they'll coach them the various sports that they've chosen to deliver. So okay. that's the way it kind of works in the partnership. So active schools is getting the kids active and we're supplying the people to deliver the sessions. To actually deliver it, yeah. Because they do yeah. a lot of good stuff around the schools, don't they? Um Yeah. So Okay, thanks. Thanks, Vonnie. That's great. Um, question: What sports facilities are there on campus? You mentioned that Kelly, didn't you? But the you've got the sports hall and we've got the the fitness suite. Um, but uh, do you want to expand on anything with that? Maybe what what equipment students get to use when they're 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 in the doing their course? Yep. So we have um a a range of equipment, both sport and and fitness. So in the games hall, you know, we have all your kind of standard stuff. You know, we've got a huge games hall and um, it's four badminton courts and um, fully equipped, fully kitted with the latest um, sports equipment. Um, in the fitness suite, we have a, a newly refurbished um, fitness suite as well with the latest um, pulse equipment, um, which has got, you know, it, it reflects what industry industry has as well. Um, so we have all your fixed weight machines, we've got Olympic lifting areas, we've got free weights, we've got kettlebells, we've got ropes, we've got bio box, we've got everything that, you know, industry has uh, and more. Um, we also have some specialist scientific equipment um, where we will, you know, perform specific VO2 max anaerobic aerobic testing um, on, on athletes as well and on, on students. Um, so yeah, we have a range of a range of facilities um, on campus um, and a range of equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got quite a lot in the the fitness suite with all the new equipment that came in over the last few years. It's it's looking really good at the moment. Um, okay, so I've got one last question on sports and fitness so far that's come in, um, and it's for Kat. Um, what is the difference between the HNC fitness, health and exercise course and the HNC coaching and development course? Okay, so um, they're kind of, their, their names give, give a big clue there. So the, the, the fitness, health and exercise um, is looking to study um, the impact of kind of your health related components of fitness and physical activity and why it's important and also the the gym instruction side of things and the fitness instruction side of things. Um, so there's a lot of, um, like like Yvonne mentioned, there's a lot of um, community involvement with different gyms and um, work placements and things as well. And it's really for somebody who's looking to go down the line of maybe like um, working in a health and fitness role, um, in a health development role or a personal training role. Um, or, or essentially, just just have their first year of the degree doing doing that if they're interested in that. Um, so the other the other side, the sports coaching side, um, like Vaughn said, is maybe a bit more suited to somebody who's looking to deliver um, coaching sessions and go into maybe PE teaching. Um, but maybe you could add a little bit more to that on on the actual um, coaching and development side because it's recently. Um, has a new course and it's had a revamp. Um, so maybe you want to add in a bit more about okay. that. So I, I myself haven't actually taught on the new framework this year. So, okay, I'll maybe hand it over to you. Yes, Kat. Yes, yeah, so we've we've got a new framework this year, and it's 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 better in the sense it gives you more hands-on experience. 
and evaluating the sports development. They go out and, and shadow someone doing a development project, so they get to learn quite a bit about the development side of sport, as well as, as the coaching side as well. So yeah, a really, really nice new course we've got that's uh, very student friendly. Great, sounds fantastic. Okay, um, right, so we've not got any more questions um, coming again. So uh, apart from one sort of generic question, which I'll answer in a second, uh, Kelly, Vaughan and Katrina, have you got anything else that you want to add before we finish up? I think I would just like to say that for anyone who's thinking of applying, you know, just just come and speak to us, come and see us. And um, we're a very friendly bunch. And um, if you would like a tour of the facilities for the person who's asking about the facilities, we'd be more than happy to have you in and, you know, show you around and things like that. So I think it's just if you have any specific questions, please just get in touch with college and I'm sure you'll you'll manage to. To get your uh, query to us somehow um so just you know just don't be a stranger come along and we're here to help with anything that you need help with okay thank you great so the last really question was about applying if i apply how long will i take to find out if i've been accepted and just to say you know if anybody that's listening has already applied or is thinking of applying um that we get back to people as soon as possible but certainly within two weeks of your application um so it's quite quick to we'll get back to you and then as kelly mentioned earlier the process is you come in for an interview and in some cases i think that's for am i right kelly is that for fe not he like the pre-start interviews? That's correct, Jess, but yep. we um, we are possibly planning some days for HE in June as well. Okay, okay. so you may come in. So the HE is, is your HNC and above, um, and FE, which is further education, is the entry level up to sort of HNC level, so. Just to mention, we're having a, a kind of open day as well on the 31st of May for any of our applicants um, to come along and meet us then as well. That's right, of course. Yes, that's from two till seven at the college, um, and that's uh, you get to meet everybody there. So, but you'll see all the information on that on our social media and um, our various channels. So, um, again, there's an opportunity there um, to speak to staff and find out more about the courses on the 31st of May from two till seven. Okay, right. I think we'll wrap up there. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Um, and um, if anybody has any other questions that they've maybe not posted in just now, or when you, you view the, the Q&A live later, because it'll still be available, um, then just send us, um, send us in your questions and we'll answer them. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.